stepper thing from Raspberry Pi 2 using the Nemo mobile operating system, uh, which is based on, well, you see the nomenclature here. Let's see, well, it's pretty much linked right now, Nemo. And the reason I'm using this shirt is because, well, you can't see this where, where this comes from. So I was part of the Nemo integration team back in 2010 and 2012 in Nokia. So I have a bit of a homage to myself from here. Um, uh, so uh, this is a very good board. As you, you are probably all familiar with Virus Group Live. Yes. So. Uh, essentially, the project started um, last year after Boston because the Raspberry Pi 2 was ARMv7. Originally, I designed it so that I could mm, use the Selfish OS, and that originally succeeded in one me for some reason. I don't know why it worked so easily, but it was a really exciting project to do because it's unlike Asteroid OS, which was presented earlier, uh, this one is so pure. So it does not use lead migrants or any Android layer in between. But as you all know, Raspberry Pi 2 has its own limitations when it comes to the freedom, freedom, freedom side of things. And uh, well, I'll sh show it to you now. So, uh, and also, there are many more devices which run in the web. One of them the old phone, and this truly means the first one because I was the first one to actually do it. So, and the instructions are in my blog, and it was a little bit difficult, but uh, I don't know if anyone else made it before. And um, according to the device wiki, which is for the late fiber sports for sailfish. Uh, Nemo Mobile can pretty much run on any one of those devices. Uh, so, um, let me show you this. The phone and the tablet are both identical. As you can see, this is the you UI. Well, they are evolving throughout the rest of them. 
should be a number showing. And the design is special in a way that when you move your finger, the slider should uh, rotate around your finger so that you can see the value all the time, even when it gets to the edge. Um, and yes, this is a swipe-based user interface, so that one went away. And here are the application displays. And usually you would see notifications here, but I have not yet received any because, well, I haven't configured it for any accounts, like text messaging and other things. Uh, these other applications are Nemo Mobile's old application, which were based on the um, Nokia's Q-Q uh, component, which apparently don't work now. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Yes. So, but we have we have the basic application framework ready, but we not need, now need some help from the community side to. Uh, uh, to develop more components. Asteroid OS has its, has its own and it's very good. But the problem is that we use mobile devices and tablets and well, with Raspberry Pi, also televisions. I have tested it myself and it works quite well. Even that you have a keyboard <laughs> and a mouse. So, uh, and Given the Raspberry Pi's potential, I also have a GSM board, which works, and, but I did not have time to configure it for Nemo right now, but it's a C900 serial port control board and with some audio rerouting to the board itself. And the middleware it uses is Opono. I don't know if anyone has heard, it, heard about it, but Generally, the open source the Google and for managing calls, text messages, and, any other, and all, all other things as well. So it is very impressive. And it handles all other kinds of modems as well. But the other point is the rail modem. And, um, well, there are Nokia modems, some Huawei modems, and so you can check out the source code. So there, so uh, I actually have to look at my slides if I had something else. Nemo Mobile was becoming 
into the edition project, which was for the N900 and N950. Those are the only devices. Apparently, uh, what I have been ported to, there are hmm, 10 devices, including the Raspberry Pi 2, which has been ported. I don't remember all of them, but if you check my Twitter, there will be links. So, uh, let's see. So yes, it was not simple at, at first to use the selfish adaptation because there was some issues with the uh, shader implementation in the middleware, which actually drops the home screen you are seeing right now. It required uh, to flip a special shader, uh, well, disable it altogether, actually, because the shader is used in other big hybrid space phones, and no, no other pure adaptation has been made yet. So, there have to be some hatch done, and you only have to use this off screen instead of the show, selfish one. And yes, this is uh, well. And I have to use the pleasure home screen because well, selfish home screen is copyrighted, and I didn't want to uh, put patches in. And that would have been only because I would have uh, adopted patches every time. We always have some updates, but I still do maintain maintain Sailfly as well. So that's most selfish project, and Emo tablet is essentially the concept Sailfly concept of turning the tablet form and providing a fully open source and free software open operating system. Well, that was actually the issue with using the Glacier home screen uh, because it didn't function very well and there were issues with launching the applications from the service operating system. It had something to do with the adaptation and the handling of the uh, floating points and I got some se segmentation faults while running completely functional applications elsewhere. So that has to be fixed. But for some reason, in the Nemo mobile adaptation, there, there is no such problem. I don't know what is the actual issue there. Uh, so, when Nemo mobile itself is free and open source of software, uh, it requires that, including the Glacier home screen and the applications themselves. It is to be said that the adaptation itself contains non-free materials. Currently, the most purest uh, device I have used, which did not use any blobs, is the Minovolt Max, which was, which I did not personally have, but I made the adaptation uh, regardless. I just gave someone an image, and he videotaped the first boot, and it went all the way to the graphics. So that was a major finger shot moment, but it was very exciting to see it function, uh, especially when usually the Intel hardware is very well supported by Mesa, at least some, some chipsets are. And for the future, other open source hardware projects will be looked at, uh, like chip is one. Uh, I actually have a good game right now, but I did not have time to make Nemo for it. But the main issue with chip is Mali. And well, we can use the binary cloud drivers that ARM provides, but they are, well, blocks. So, uh, and the Lima effort has not been moving forward for a while. But it's all right. Uh, generally speaking, it's, um, it's good to have community will take, take steps towards working, uh, especially when uh, something like smaller than the Raspberry Pi could be made into a phone or a tablet and completely open so far. That would be a really nice future concept.
that is one that I will be looking at. And the 564 board, which is just funded for over a million dollars in kids' software. So that's going to be a part as well. The problem with 564 is that we don't have a Khmer core adaptation for the 64 bit ARM processor yet. We don't have the packages at this yet, but there was some time was leading the effort in for uh, the Nemo software and the Nero middleware in the 64 4 bit ARM processor. So it's something. Um, this also makes possible the, for example, well, modern mobile phones like the Nexus 5X. There's a porting effort towards that. Um, probably in your mobile as well. So, well, it's sales at first, but if there is a, an adaptation for a new mobile in there, I will definitely look into it. So in general, the way to do an adaptation for leaf hybrid devices is to use a fine engine model uh, based system and then you layer in the lip fibers library in between and then stack up silfish or uh, well mobile on top. The process is generally the same and the Yolabas have been doing excellent work in bringing such good instructions with the uh, hardware adaptation development kits so that it's really simple. Well at least for me plus but I have I will help if there are any issues regarding those. Uh, generally speaking, the uh, lead fibers adaptations, well, the, the Java phone is one, and I have uh, Galaxy Nexus, which is also one. Uh, generally speaking, the lead fibers adaptations are much more simple to implement because you have everything done by lead fibers machine, this like a layer between the uh, Android drivers converting into something that GDC can use. So that's, that's a major project that has helped a lot on the new mobile porting, porting side. And you can also use USB, but it's not supported, but it will make a functional image. I have seen it myself. Now, before my, I close to the closing words, I will show you the mobile phone side. Mainly because it's more functional than this one. So. Thank you. 